Hi, Real family. Welcome to another episode on the Queen with a Difference podcast. I am Favor Femi, and I am the Queen with a Difference. So, on today's episode, we are going to be talking on something that I termed, on a topic that I termed, the only duty of every singles. Yes, so basically this um, video is not just for the sisters and it's not just for the brothers. It's for as long as you are single, you are not yet married, this video is for you. And today I'm going to be telling you the only thing, the only duty that God has for us and the only duty that we are supposed to do, we are obliged to do. And that's what we'll be talking about today. So... If you are new here, welcome and this is Favor Okpey Me On this podcast, we talk on about everything related to ladies, godly living, sexual purity and lifestyle. So yeah, if you are a returning subscriber, thank you for coming back to watch. And please, I want to encourage you to do well to watch till the end of this video. If you are watching this video and you have not subscribed to this channel, please do well to subscribe, like this video so that YouTube can recommend it to more persons and do well to turn on your notification bell so that anytime i upload a video you will be the first to receive it all right so let's dive into what the gist of today is about and that is the only duty of every single ladies every single person every singles either you're a single mother single father single sister single brother as long as you fall under the single this video is definitely for you so basically i was in church today and I, as I was sitting, the pastor was teaching on love and everything and how we should love our neighbors, love everybody that's around us and how it is God's first commandment to us and all of that. But then, I don't know how the thoughts came, but it just came. Oh, I remember how it came. We read a particular part of the scripture where it was, where the pastor was saying that we should seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then this verse now, you know, popped up to, in my spirit. That's 1 Corinthians 7 verse 34 to 35 it says that there is okay 34 says there is difference also between a wife and a virgin the unmarried woman cared for the things of the lord that she may be holy both in body and in spirit but she that is married cared for the things of the world how she may please her husband and then 35 now says and this i speak for your own profit not that i may cast a snare upon you but for that which is comely and that ye may attend upon the lord without destruction distraction when i read this of course this is not my first time of reading it i've read it several times and this has always been on my mind this is where the duty of every single person lies one thing i know because i'm also a single lady <laughs> one thing i know is this especially for ladies there's this part of us that anticipates the future and anticipate who the husband I'm going to get married to, God, who is the person? And we're praying, we're praying, we're praying. God, how many children do I want to have? Nobody has come to ask me out in these last three months, in these last two months. And you're already thinking, oh, this is my friend, this is my male friends. Out of all of them, even if I'm going to marry, who am I going to get married to among all my male friends? You're thinking, let this brother just come and ask me out. Oh, God, I'm going to be... What which other thing do we used to think of? Oh, the person I'm going to marry has to be this, has to be that, has to be... Has to be tall, has to be dark, has to be taller than me. I can't marry somebody that is shorter than me. He, he should have money. He has to be sound intellectually. Like our intelligence must be able to match. These are some of the things that we think of, we think about, we fantasize over. And of course, they are not totally bad. It's not good to fantasize, but like thinking on some of these things are not bad. But then, I would say that these things are the things that Paul called distractions. Because these things are distracting us from living in our moment, in this moment that God has put us in. Many of us, the singles, we are much more concerned about what will happen tomorrow. We are not living in the moment at this particular time. So now, when you now eventually get married, what will you say about your single days? I've heard elders, married men, married women say stuff like, when I was single, I invested in this, in this, in this, and that is what I am now reaping now. As a single lady, as a single brother watching me, I want to ask you, what are you investing in? It is good that you invest in so many places. Recently, a verse has been coming to my mind. Sow your seeds, 
that should, that should be in Ecclesiastes. I was saying that you should sow in different places because you don't know which one that will come back to you. It's good that you invest. But I want, this is like a wake up call to every single, that your life is not just dependent on your marriage. That's why you see some people are so desperate to get into a relationship. And at the end of the day, because of their desperacy, this, they, they enter a toxic relationship that they cannot com, come out of. Or that they find it out eventually come out of. No, God do not want that kind of life for us. Now let me tell you what our duty is. Our duty is to invest. But what are we supposed to invest in? Because some, I see some men, they, fan, they also fantasize about the kind of house, the kind of money, the kind of money where I go get safe, eh? Ah, any lady where I talk to, you know, go, how would they say it? Any lady, any lady that they talk to will not be able to say no to them. Some guys have that kind of mentality. Some guys have the mentality that, oh, let them have this money first and then ladies will start chasing them. Some guys are just after money, 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 let me be this rich, let me be this, that, let me... And they are just all over. But this is not what God has called us into. This is not what God has called us to do. As a single lady, as a single man, here's, the, here's our duty and here's where our duty lies. It says that the unmarried woman cared for the things of the Lord. Do you get that? Somebody who is unmarried, this is where our duty lies. Cares for the things of the Lord that she may be only both in body and in spirit. This is what God expects of you as a single lady. God wants you to spend more time with him. He wants you to invest in your, you know, communication with him, in your relationship with him. You see, I, I used to picture this thing that the time a lady is free is your university days. And that's like the time you're most single. That, that, that's the time you can like begin to call yourself, oh, I'm a single. And this, because as long as you, you're still a child and you're still staying with your parents, you are a child, you get. But the moment you get to university, then maybe you're living alone. Some, are, some, some people still go to university from their you know, parents' home and all of that. But then, the, that moment when you're grown up, you begin to classify yourself as, oh, I'm a single, I'm this and that and all of that. Singlehood is not just somebody that is ready to entangle or somebody that is ready to be engaged or somebody that is ready to be, to be in a relationship. It is more than that. Your duty as a single person is... That you can have your all. You can have more time for God. And this is what God is calling us to do. As singles, God wants us to dedicate more time to him. Yes. God wants us to dedicate more time to him. He wants, he wants, he wants to have that kind of relationship with us. Like we have with somebody that we are in a physical relationship with. You know how you cannot do without calling. How you cannot do without fantasizing about somebody that you think should be your man. Eh? That's the same way God wants our hearts to beat to him. Because he knows that the moment we get entangled, the moment we are married, we begin to, you have children to take care of, you have work to do, you have husband to, to cater for, you have a lot of things already in your plates. And God did not want, God wants that, you know, how would you say it that, oh, God, me and God, we have this, this relationship. And one thing I can tell you from my life is, it just pays to, to serve Jesus. There is love in, in, in God, like, only if you will come a bit closer. So God is calling us to our duty. And the duty is to spend more time with him. I was trying to write from um, the message version. I'm going to be reading from verse 32 to 35. It says, I want you to live as free of complication as possible. So that's to tell you that when you are married, you have more work to do. You have a lot. Who told you that the married are having it all cool? Ask your mother. She's thinking of all her five children, all her three children, thinking of how her husband will do this, how. No, it's not easier when you get married. It's not. Free of complication as possible. When you are married, you are free to concentrate on simply pleasing the master. This should be our duty. That we are just simply, this is just what we are living for. I am living for God. Man will come. Then it says, marriage involves you in all the knots and bolts of domestic life, in the wanting to please your spouse, leading to many more demands on your attention, the time and energy that married people spend on caring for and nurturing each other, the unmarried can spend in becoming old and holy. Instruments of God. Exactly, you have more time. And that time, God wants you to spend it with him. In the end, it says, I'm trying to be helpful. 
and make it as easy as possible for you. Not make things harder. All I want is for you to be able to develop a way of life in, in which you can spend plenty of time together with the master without a lot of distraction. Some persons don't even have a place of personal relationship with God, even as a single. And now they're in a relationship, they don't even have time for God again. But do you know that if you build yourself, like, like Paul was saying here, that he wants us to build the life, he wants us to develop our life to that point where we, you know, you just see spending time with your, you, you see spending time with your master, that's God, as a normal thing. Like, it's no longer a big deal. When I mean big deal now, like, it's not a burden. You're not doing it out of, oh, I have to be disciplined to read my Bible. I have to be disciplined to pray. It's like, it becomes a lifestyle. It becomes a normal thing. And then, from there, it becomes easy for you to pass on to your children. If you, if you as a single, you are seen going to church as a burden. I tell you, is whenever you people like in your house that you'll be going to church and your children will never see church as important. They'll see church as an option is if you want to. You will go. God is calling us that to come back to Him, spend more time with Him, live a life of holiness in these our single days, and not just that. He wants us to spend more time with Him and develop ourselves such that our time with God can become a lifestyle above it being a body or a, or a routine, but a what? A lifestyle it becomes a part of you to talk to Jesus every day to to communicate with Jesus every day do you understand I hope you got the point of this video and I hope that you have been blessed please let me know what you think about this video in the comment section and until the next time I will see you bye